In today's video, we're going to build this 1 to 49 un un, which is essentially a matching unit for an N fed half wave wire antenna. It'll handle 250 watts, operate over the HF frequency band, and present a 50 ohm impedance, or roughly a 50 ohm impedance, when feeding an N fed half wave antenna, which has, you know, 2.5 or 3k ohms of impedance. So let's take a look at what we've got. So a nice weatherproof enclosure uh, with the weather stripping for it and some hardware for both the counterpoise connection, the strain relief connection, the SO239 for the antenna connection, uh, some additional hardware, uh, some zip ties, uh, the wire that we'll use to wind the transformer on the toroidal core, and then a really nice uh, a little PC board that we'll strap the core to and use that to bolt it down inside the box. Now the first step is going to be to drill the 5 eighths or about 16 millimeter diameter hole for the SO239 connector. And uh, it's best to mount that about a half an inch below the, the top surface here of the, of the case. So I've just mounted it out with a marking gauge here. We'll put a little scratch mark in for my half inch. We'll measure halfway across and drill that hole. I'm using a step drill bit here because it's easy to kind of get down to the size we need. And that looks like a perfect fit. So we'll just mark and drill the four mounting holes for the flange. I'll we'll get the first hole marked. We'll just drill that one, bolt it down, and then use the, uh, the mounting plate as a guide for the other three. And with the one bolt installed, we'll use the flange as a guide for drilling the other holes. Next we drill a 13 64th hole, about 4 millimeters, uh, next to the SO239 to mount the stud for the counterpoise. We've got the SO239 and counterpoise stud just mounted loosely for now so I can keep track of the hardware. On the other end we're going to drill two more holes, one for the strain relief and the other for the stud that will be used to actually connect the end fed half wave wire. Location is really not that important, we're going to put the strain relief about in the center uh, just for balance. And that basically completes the mechanical machining for the housing. Let's get started on the transformer. Uh, the first two turns of the transformer are bifiler wound, so I'm going to take about 8 inches of the wire, fold it back on top of itself, and give it a couple of light twists to keep it together. And that should do nicely. Now there's going to be a total of 14 turns. The first two turns composed of the double wire, and then the remaining 12 will be just the single wire. And remember, you count a turn each time the wire passes through the center. So here's our first two turns that are going to be done with the double wire. After this we go single. Now with the first six turns completed, we're going to essentially cross over the coil. We're going to come out and then start wrapping around this way back to this direction. And that's going to do two things for us. It tends to somewhat break up the inner winding capacitance. And it's also going to ensure that the final winding completes on this side of the toroid, which is where we want it to be inside the housing. Alright, so let's count our turns here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have our 14 turns, primary and secondary output. We've got the loop off the twisted part here. Now we're just going to strip the insulation off the ends of each of these wires and tin them nicely so we can solder them into the connectors. Now with that pair of wires stripped and soldered, we'll just uh, strip and tin the other side of the primary and then do the far end of the secondary. Now that the transformer is all prepared, let's mount it to the mounting plate using the supplied zip ties. Okay, and just careful to make sure we orient uh, the wires appropriately before we uh, cinch down the zip ties. And it looks like we're in good shape. In order to connect the flange of the SO239 and the counterpoise stud, I added a, another little wire pigtail here to connect the two terminals. And I've got the other terminal connected here for the secondary. We're ready to mount it in and connect everything up. I wish my fingers were a little smaller to get in there, but we got those screws all started. I'll just uh, cinch the bracket down and then we'll make our connections. This is probably the trickiest part of the mechanical assembly, is just getting these small washers and nuts in place and then uh, fitting in both of the terminals with the short wire between them. And uh, I use the star washers on either side of the terminals to make a good bite into those. We just need to attach uh, the stud for the end fed wire 
and we're about wrapped up. Okay, and that completes the installation of the stud for the uh, N-fed wire. So mechanically, it's really complete. All we need to do is install the weather gasket in the cover and attach the cover. Now the kit also comes with this uh, 100 picofarad capacitor that uh, the instructions say to solder across the primary, across the SO239, but mainly in applications at the higher end of the frequency bands like 15, 12, and 10 meters. My application, I'm going to use this primarily on 40 and maybe a little on 20, so I'm going to leave the capacitor out. Maybe at some point I'll mount it inside and maybe even put it on a switch so I can switch it back and forth uh, in circuit and out of circuit. But for now, it's going to stay out. As we stated at the beginning, this is a 49 to 1 un-un. So it's designed to transform the you know, 2500 or 3000 ohm impedance of an NFED half wave to 50 ohms. So in order to test it, I've uh, soldered a couple of 1K carbon comp resistors together and attached them from uh, the Feet, antenna feed point to the counterpoise and uh, we'll take a look at it on the analyzer. All right, so let's first check it on the 40 meter band. Let's see, 40 meters will be 3. And we'll do a quick little SWR chart and yeah, it looks like we're oh, about 1.3 to 1 uh, transforming that 3k ohms down to 50 ohms. That's pretty good. Let's take a look at uh, 20 meters and sweep that. Uh, 1.34 to 1, that looks pretty darn good there. Now let's look at some of the other bands. Let's look at uh, at 15. I expect it might be a little bit higher. Yeah, so it's a little under 2 to 1, and we could see it rising. So certainly, probably above 15 meters, we'd need that 100 picofarad capacitor. But in my case, operating on 40 meters and 20 meters, looks like it'll work out great. Uh, just for the heck of it, we'll sweep the entire range of the analyzer here. And we can certainly see an optimum uh, operating frequency range. If we scoot over there, we can see we're below 1.5 to 1 from, oh, about uh, a portion of the 75 meter band here. Might be able to get away with using it uh, on, this, on the uh, 75 meter band. And we stay below 1.5 to 1 all the way up to about 17 megahertz. Uh, so we might be able to get away with even uh, using this on 17 meters. We're still below 2 to 1. So uh, so pretty good over uh, most of the you know, usable portions of the lower HF uh, operating bands. Right, last thing is just to apply the sticker. And we are all done with this build. I think it was a, a really nice high quality 49 to 1 transformer. And it's going to work out really well for some NFED half wave wire antennas in the future. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And thanks again as always for watching. See you next time.